This show is sponsored by ODYS Global. Make sure that you do sign up and get a free $100 bonus by checking out ODYS Global's Age Domains or Done For You affiliate websites. Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 36 of SEO Tells. And in this episode, Craig and I are going to be sharing some absolute must-have Chrome extensions that you need if you just want to make the most out of your productivity um, and efficiency and things like that. And off air, literally just a minute ago, Craig was mentioning some crazy, crazy Chrome extensions that I, I think are absolutely amazing. Um, so Craig, let's start off with, with that. What are some of these awesome Chrome extensions that people might not know about, but are very useful for productivity? So we spoke about LinkedIn on several of the previous uh, shows and how to use that effectively. Um, now, obviously, you can use the simple LinkedIn functionality and filters to get to the right people, but are they going to respond to, uh, respond to an in-mail or, or something like that? They might, they might not. So there's a cool little Chrome extension called Contact Out, which is completely free. And basically, when you click on contact out the Chrome extension, when you've got the person's LinkedIn profile there, it will give you their email address and sometimes even their phone number. Now, I'm not suggesting that you start phoning them up, um, but strategically, you could drop them an email, a soft email saying, hey, man, you know, I've been checking you out and, you know, I want to get you in, in touch with you for this, that or the next thing. Obviously, how you approach it is is how much success you're going to have, but contact out for LinkedIn and being able to identify those people's email addresses just can again position you. You can basically drop something right into someone's lap. And obviously you need, you know, I'm not suggesting you use it as a spam technique, but uh, contact out is a good one. But I'm going to run through and then we'll go through yours, Tamar. I'm just going to run through a couple of the extensions I have and why I've got them. So I've got Grammarly. I think that one's common sense uh, for spelling. You know, we all type fast and get distracted and stuff like that. So I think Grammarly is a good Chrome extension, which comes with the Grammarly package. You do have to pay for it. Um, I do have uh, another one called followup.cc. So if you put in followup.cc into the Google search bar, you'll be able to find this particular tool. Now, it's a Chrome extension. Um, it does cost money. I think it's around about 10 bucks a month. But what you can do with follow-up CC is if I send Itamar an email just now, um, you, you can basically do a follow-up sequence to those emails. You can track when he read the email. But what is also quite cool is if I'm drafting some emails on a Sunday, this actually allows me to send the email at whatever time I want. So I could ping that out at half past two in the Monday. So you can actually schedule your emails to go out, even though you're typing them all out on a Sunday, you might not you might not want that to land in someone's inbox until Monday or, or Tuesday or whatever it might be. So you can actually schedule your emails. But if Itamar doesn't respond in three or four days, you can also through this add a follow-up sequence saying, hey, Itamar, you've not replied yet. What the hell's going on, you know? hurry up and, you know, whatever, if you're trying to G the person up. And uh, and if Itamar replies to that, it automatically cancels out any follow-up sequence. So if Itamar did reply to me a day later or, or before the follow-up sequence, it would then cancel that out. So follow-up CC is good for email tracking, um, a whole bunch of other stuff, including that scheduling stuff, and it's like 10 bucks a month. Works with Gmail, by the way, nothing else. I also have... Um, something called Friend Filter for Facebook. Again, it's a paid extension. Now, the reason I've got that is we all have a lot of friends in Facebook. And I think, again, Itamar mentioned previously um, on the Twitter episode, engagement is key. Now, on Facebook, you only can have 5,000 friends on your personal profile. So we all get all of these random requests, especially if you're in the SEO industry from people you've never heard of, you don't know. Now, some of them can become super engaged. Some of them can even become friends. Some of them can become business associates, whatever. But even for me, who's got 5,000 friends, if I run my 
um, Chrome extension, what it does is scrapes all of my posts for the last 30 days or 60 days or whatever settings you want to do, and it will filter all of those people that are engaged and tell you who's engaged and who's not. Now, you, from there, you can automatically start ticking boxes and flushing out the people that don't engage with you because when you're not getting engagement from someone, they're taking up a space that someone else could have. And I think pruning your Facebook list is a really important thing. Now, do you want to do that manually? Can you do it manually? Yes, you can. But it's a pain in the bloody ass. And you might delete someone, you know, because they had a similar name to someone who doesn't um, do it. However, using this Chrome extension gives you the list of people who are not engaged with you. So you're, there is no mistakes. If people are not engaged, they can get off of your profile, tick, 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 and it automatically does it all for you. It's called Friend Filter. And again, it's a relatively low-cost monthly subscription, but works really well. Um, the last one I'm going to talk about, and then I'll give Itamar some airtime, <laughs> is VidIQ, which I use for... It's a Chrome extension which I use for YouTube videos, which it will um, give me ideas of tags and and, and and it can basically look at other similar channels and give me tags for my YouTube videos, which is a great tool, rather than me manually again going through um, and checking all that stuff out. Then the vidIQ um, extension for YouTube is a great little Chrome extension. So that is just a handful of the Chrome extensions I've got. Um, Itamar, what 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 kind of Chrome extensions have you got there, and what do they do? Oh man, I have. I mean, I've got a lot, but yeah, let me just pick a handful. Um, and the good thing is, I guess, for people watching who like free stuff, then this will be good for you because all of the extensions I use are free. Um, actually, except for one of them, which I'll get into, but that's just really important anyway. Um, so the first one that I quite like to have um, is redirect path. And the reason why I like having this, uh, especially for SEO, is because if I get a link sometimes from a certain publication or whatever, um, I'll always like click the link that they give me. And sometimes I find that they maybe missed out uh, on a particular, uh, like a forward slash, or they put HTTP. Um, cause that's also really important to address as well with somebody who links to you is, you know, are they linking to the right, um, URL? Because if you're going to end up linking to say HTTP and then my site, that's going to redirect automatically to HTTPS, but you always want to eliminate these redirects, especially if you find that you've got a big redirect chain where, you know, you've got a link that's going first to the www version. Um, which is HTTP, which then has to go over to the HTTPS version of www. So that can be a bit of a problem. Um, so, if, you know, redirect path is just very easy to see exactly the status code of each URL that you get to, and it will show you exactly what the journey has been. Um, and that's just really nice to have as a little uh, way to easily identify if you've got any redirect chains. Um, another one that I'll talk about is uh, Mangools, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a free SEO extension. Um, and what I use it for is just for checking on page stuff. So if I'm on any web page, you go on the on page tab and you'll be able to see what the SERP presence is like. You'll be able to see the meta tags that they've used, any structured data that they've used, the heading tags. Um, you can even see, you know, on page keywords and it will give you a kind of uh, the key density of the amounts of words that they're using on the page. You've got all of these different things. And I think with uh, Mangles, you can upgrade to uh, like a paid uh, subscription with it, which gives you more um, features like keywords. You can check backlinks, um, rank tracking as well. Even so, it's quite just an easy one to go in if you're like doing some competitor analysis and you want to look at a particular page that a competitor has and just see what it is they're using on page. Um, that's quite useful to have. Uh, another one that I would mention, which is more for the scraping, more for the kind of bulk analysis, would be SEO Ruler, um, because with that, you can essentially scrape from the SERP, like the people also ask questions very easily. You can scrape anything from any web page, like all the heading tags. Um, and it's just a nice way, I guess, to, to do some kind of quick and easy bulk um, data analysis or scraping. 
Um, and then from that, you can essentially create content and things like that. Um, and I've, I've got to go to manage extensions because there's not enough showing here. Um, let's see, what's another good one? So uh, there's also one called Keywords Everywhere, which uh, some people might use to yeah, just quick and easy be able to see like the tags that a certain YouTube video has, or even just when you're on the SERP to see the kind of um, the you know basic metrics of keywords. Um, so that's another free one that you can use. Um, another one which is also quite good is uh, check my links. So when you're on any web page, you'll be able to kind of tell you what the state, or it'll show you if there are any broken links um, on a web page, and you can quickly see that. Um, and then you can use that, I guess, to reach out to someone or whatever you want to do. Um, and let's see, I'll go through two more. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So one called email extractor, uh, which is, is similar, I guess, to the one that you mentioned, Craig, about the LinkedIn. But this one, essentially, when you're on a website, it will try and uh, kind of scan the site to see if it's found an email associated with it. And that can be sometimes useful um, for your outreach if you're just doing that. Um, like that kind of manual process if you're on a site. Um, that can be quite good. I've used that quite a lot for, for emails. And the last one that I'll mention, which is just more of an overall productivity one, is LastPass, um, because I think that is very, very important to have. Um, and I'll just kind of uh, give an extension to LastPass on its own. So what I do is you use LastPass and you essentially generate a very strong password for all of the accounts that you have because you never want to have the same password for multiple different accounts because if there's a data breach or something, then you're fucked. Um, so what you do with LastPass is you just set up a master password, which you need to remember, and then that's the only password you ever need to remember, essentially, because everything else is going to be stored on LastPass. Um, and if you want to, you know, if you care about security and privacy, that's really important. And the one extra thing you can do is get something like, and Craig, I've mentioned this to you a while ago. I don't know if you got it in the end, um, but a YubiKey, which is. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it's here. So just in case people think that I don't take advice from other people <laughs> um, and don't listen, there is my YubiKey right there. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so for people who don't know what that is, essentially, um, it's a key that you can connect with LastPass. So even if somebody has your password for LastPass for whatever reason, they'll have to physically get that key, plug it in via USB, and um, put your finger on it to then access that. So, you know, YubiKey, it just is an incredible amount of security um, to add on top of LastPass. Um, so I'd recommend having that combination. And you can also connect like YubiKey or security keys to stuff like your Google account. Um, so, cause you know, your Google account is very important um, to have, it's one of the most important, you know, types of accounts that you've got. Um, so you can connect it to there. So if somebody even has your Google password for whatever reason, they can't access it unless they have that physical key cause each one of them is unique. So that's just a, a you know, a security productivity um, tip. Uh, as well. But if you do want to have YubiKey, you'll need to buy the premium version of LastPass. Um, so, you know, if you just want the free version of LastPass, it's still really good. Um, but yeah, that's just the, the last kind of tip I've got about the security, just because I think it's important to mention for people who run multiple different profiles and things like that, and you want to keep your stuff secure. Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. Um, and there's some good tips here that I can't highly recommend last pass in itself enough uh, i think in this day and age very important to to have some security and obviously that was one of the only paid ones you mentioned but i certainly think in certain instances that using a paid tool for something like that is something you cannot really scrimp and scrape on but if you guys have any other recommendations for us or other people watching the show, please do leave them in the comments below. But yeah, that is us for this week and maybe this year. I'm not sure when this goes out, but <laughs> um, if this is the last one of the year, then have a good Christmas period and a good and hopefully 
much better 2021 um, and hopefully we are seeing light at the end of the tunnel with coronavirus and everything else. So from Itamar and myself, we will catch you all again in the new year. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.